In our discussion on the radioactive decay law, we define a concept known as the activity of our unstable atom. So we said that the activity of our unstable atom is equal to the absolute value of the rate of decay of that unstable atom. So recall that the rate of decay is given by taking the derivative of n with respect to t, where n is simply the remaining amount, remaining number of isotopes, atoms, that have not yet undergone that radioactive decay. And the rate of change, our derivative, is equal to negative alpha multiplied by n, where alpha is our decay constant. So if we take the absolute value of both sides so that we only deal with a positive number, we get our activity of our unstable atom. So this gives us the activity of our atom. Now, Recall in our previous lecture we said we derived this equation known as the radioactive decay law. So this equation gives us n, the number of remaining unstable isotopes that have not yet undergone radioactive decay. And notice that this n is the same as this n that appears in this equation. So basically we can take this n and replace it with the product of these two quantities, where n naught is simply the amount of unstable isotopes at an initial time of t naught of zero seconds, and t is the time and alpha is our decay constant. So we see that the activity is given by the product of alpha and n, which is equal to, we replace n with this, we get this, open up our parentheses, we get this equation. So this equation expresses the activity of our atom in terms of alpha, the time, and our initial amount and not. Now notice, using this equation we can find what our activity is, what our rate of decay is of the atom at a time of zero seconds by simply plugging in zero for our t. If we plug in zero for the t, we have e to the zero is simply equal to one and we see that the activity is simply equal to alpha times n naught times one or simply alpha times n. So so this equation basically gives us the activity or the rate of decay of our unstable atom at a time of t naught of zero seconds. So we basically see we can use this equation here to basically graph or present the rate of change of our activity, how our activity actually changes with respect to time. So, we see that as t increases, the activity of our unstable parent atom is given by this equation, which is written in the following way, where this should be our r naught. So basically, uh, it's very often that we replace this entire quantity with r and this quantity with r naught, and we get the following equation. So sometimes this is also known known as the radioactive decay law. So R0 is simply given by taking the product of alpha and R0, and R is this quantity. So R is the activity, and R0 is the initial activity at a time of zero. So this equation tells us that the activity R decreases exponentially over time as time progresses, just like the total number of remaining unstable nuclei n also decreases exponentially as per this equation. So we can graph this equation on the following graph. So we have the y-axis is our r, the activity, and the x-axis uh, is time. And as we increase the time, we see that the activity decreases exponentially. The rate of decay drops exponentially. Now at a time of t initial of zero seconds, we see that our rate of decay or the activity is actually at a maximum amount 
down given by R equals R naught. So at a time of zero, our activity is given by R naught. But as time increases, the rate of decay decreases and it does so exponentially as given by this curve. So this curve basically represents R naught multiplied by e to the negative alpha times t.